Nisha Grayson, founder and CEO of The Art of Applying here on my living room floor during the holidays with my hair swooped to the side very fashionably in honor of our client guest today. Hello, introduce yourself, Miss Swooped Hair to the Side. That inspired me to swoop my hair to the side today. Hello, everyone. My name is Kuza Mutasa. I am um, one of the clients that just finished up the program. Wonderful, wonderful. And the way I like to start these interviews, Kutsai, is straight up front. I like for you to say your results so that the people watching can get excited for you, celebrate mm -hmm. you, we can honor you, and then we can go into um, the rest of your story and your journey of working with us. Okay. Um, so I started applying um, at Northwestern Kellogg's Executive MBA program last November, and this past October, I was accepted into the program. So I'm really excited. So this January, I will be in um, one of the um, cohorts, um, cohort um, 118 at Northwestern Executive MBA program, Kellogg program. How exciting. Congratulations. Yes, very exciting. So just to make the timeline clear to everybody, you reached out to us in what month and what year? Mm -hmm. So I reached out, I think it was in January or February of 2018. Okay, so you reached out, let's just call it January to, to make the math easier, January 2018, and you worked mm -hmm. with us for, for months, mm -hmm. um, and then now you just, you heard back in October 2018, yes. mm -hmm. and then you're going to go to school in when? Um, January. Uh, 2019. Oh, very soon. Yeah, like a couple days. <laughs> How exciting. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so do y'all see that Kutsai came to work with us a year before it was time for her to go to school? And she, you could have come probably even earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, talk to us more about that, about uh, what made you come to The Art of Applying and reach out to work with us anyway? Um, mm -hmm. and, and then what slowed you down from, from reaching out? Yeah. So, um, I had started, um, applying, um, to grad school because I was just hitting a, a bump in the wall with my career and I knew that I needed to take a next step in getting my MBA. And so I was looking at other programs and other programs, um, kind of required you to look at multiple schools and visit and do a whole program. And I knew that I wanted to go to Kellogg. Um, that was the only school that I really wanted to go to. Um, and so I reached out to some of my friends from um, college who I knew were in the MBA program and just had some questions for them about how the, um, how the application process was, how long it took for them, um, scholarships, funding, and things like that. And one of the young ladies, she did the art of applying and she um, graduated, um, not graduated, but she um, got accepted into Chicago's Booth School, um, University of Chicago Booth. And um, I, I asked her how she was able to do it. And she talked about how she used the program and she used Mario. And I was like, oh, well, great. So um, that's how I got introduced into it. And um, she's very smart, very hardworking. And so I um, viewed her as a reliable source. Um, and so I reached out to the art of applying and it was like instant, just starting from like reached out and then just went from there. Beautiful, beautiful. So without um, discussing the investment, just because as you know, we like to have the breakthrough call with the person and we only invite people to work right. with us if we're hundred percent sure we can help them. And then we'll share the investment and what that looks like to work with us. Talk to, talk to me about what your experience was like um, on the breakthrough call um, what did you think it was going to be like? What was it actually like? And the feelings you had on the call? Mm -hmm. So um, initially, my friend did prepare for me. She said, um, you know, it was it was higher than what she had expected. And so when she said that, I had a number in my mind. And then during the breakthrough call, the number was higher than I expected. <laughs> but um, my consultant, he really was like, is this worth it? Like, do you think the 
we would bring value to you. And I thought about the type of learner that I am and when um, I'm doing something new, the type of support that I need. And just um, knowing that my friend went through the program and she had a success story, I just felt that this is something that I need to invest in. And um, time is critical for me. I didn't want to do this on my own. That's one of the things the um, consultant talked to me about, that some people do this on their own fail and then have to come back. And I knew that I wanted to apply to Kellogg and I didn't want to, you know, continue, you know, not to, to apply, not get in, then have to do it again next year. Um, so I was just like, let me take the time and invest in myself. And honestly, it was um, the best decision I could have made, um, not only from a professional standpoint, but also from a personal standpoint, because I feel there were so many different emotional roller coasters. Um, and I'm sure that you all may or may not be experiencing it from applying from an MBA. Like, is this the right time for me? Am I ready for it? Um, is this the school for me? You know, am I capable to apply to an Ivy League school? All of these things go through your mind and just having that additional support um, and having a, another sounding board um, was really helpful for me. And I, um, I'm really grateful for it. Beautiful, beautifully said. And Kutsa, how does it feel to have had the vision an entire year ago, almost exactly, and to now be in a few days uh, heading off to your dream school? Yeah, it feels incredible. I mean, um, it has been a long journey for me, um, just preparing for the essays because there's so many things that I wanted to say and trying to pare it down. Um, and also just the conversations with my consultant who was amazing, Mario, um, and was very patient with me, um, um, gave me so much, many words of encouragement. And it was just a great process. And just with my work situation with an executive MBA, you have to get corporate sponsorship. So also having to work through that component of it, that's probably what took me a long time, getting the buy-in from my company to, to um, allow for me to um, participate in the program. Um, so that's one of the reasons why it took long. And then when that took long, it kind of discouraged me to be honest with you because it took so long and I was like, am I just doing this? Should I even be applying? Is there something else that I should be doing? And I really had to take a step back and for months really re-encourage myself to pick up the the application process and um do it again because i initially when i joined the art of applying i was applying for the april deadline of 2018 and then that had passed and i didn't get my sponsorship and then i was applying for the july and that had passed and then when I finally got it, I was just like exhausted from trying to get <laughs> the approval. Um, so it was, I think in this whole process, it was really God because um, two weeks before the, pro the application, the final deadline was due, somebody from the Art of Applying reached out to me and was like, hey, we noticed that you haven't been, you know, writing on your essays and you haven't, you know, been communicating, just wanted to follow back up with you. And I appreciated that because then it just reminded me, I have to finish it. And I, and I applied, and this is not ideal, but I applied, um, the last round because um it's a rolling admissions i applied the last round and it was like 10 days of writing rewriting that essay and that 10 days i was clear because i had had you know months to really reflect on like i've gone through all of this what is my story why do i really want this nba and um i want them to see this is what I want because I've worked all year for it, really. Um, and so the art of applying just allowed for me to consolidate my thoughts because I, I was all over the place. I was talking about, oh, my volunteer and this and this and this. And when you have 450 words, there's only so much you can say. So um, I'm really grateful. Oh, beautiful. I love it. Okay, so you had a breakthrough call and in the call, 
the person asked you lots and lots of questions mm -hmm. and got really clear that yes, we can help you Kutsai and your person invited you to work with us. And of course there's an investment for working with us and you decided to take the leap and make that investment. How did it feel taking that mm -hmm. leap to invest in yourself and your application process? It honestly was um, scary, um, but at the time I, I really was scared about it. Um, and I, was, I wanted to make sure that it was the right investment, the right program, the right timing. Um, but looking back, I would do it all over again. And um, I've actually taken a step back and said, I need to invest in myself more in my personal life because you know, throughout life, I'm always helping other people. Um, and yes, I've, you know, come a long way, but there's things that I've neglected about myself. So I've gotten a personal trainer since that because I realized that, you know, I need support for that. Um, I've done a, um, a lot of other things just to make sure that I'm a whole person and not always just giving to other people and then being depleted, but also focusing on giving to myself and sometimes we do have to invest in ourselves and sometimes it is uncomfortable but at the end you'll get the results that you want because you could be training it's like for example i'll give the example of personal training you can go to the gym every single day and you can be working out but you're not getting any results similar to you could be studying you could be writing these essays and you're not getting the results you want whereas you have somebody who's an expert in that area who does this every single day and you just have a couple phone calls or a couple edits and it's so much faster and I'll say this, I'm not, I always say this and people say stop saying it. I'm not the best writer, but I think because of this process, I've become a better writer because oh, having somebody read my essay and then critiquing it, I was able to see where I could improve. So I think my writing has gotten better because of the different feedback and critiques that I received. Oh, I love it. Beautiful. And it is scary. It is scary to invest in yourself. Is it going to work? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it worked for my friend, but will it work for me? And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I would say that there is a comfort, though, in investing in yourself because you're like, you know what, this is a person who is an expert at this, mm -hmm. someone who I trust has already worked with them. And even if it wasn't someone you knew well, someone who is fairly similar to me. Right. Um, has worked with them and had great results. And that's why we do these video interviews is so that someone else out there who's like, hey, she reminds me of somebody like me or that she, I would mm -hmm. be friends with or one of my coworkers. And if, if she can do it, I can do it. Now, yeah. speaking of that, somebody like me, I know that the viewers out there, what they always wanna know and whatever you wanna share is they're gonna wanna know your stats, whatever of your stats you wanna share in relation to numbers, age, Mm -hmm. um, GPA, college that you went to, what you majored in, mm -hmm. uh, your, your test scores, the numbers type things to where they can be like, okay, well, where do I stack up? I should have actually yeah. done that earlier. But. Yeah. So um, I'm 35 years old. I just turned 35 on Tuesday, December Happy, 18th. happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, and so I went to DePaul University um, got a degree in marketing, um, Bachelor of Science, and, and my GPA, I think, was a 3.425 or something like that. Oh, something like, you went all yeah. the way, you went right. to all the digits. <laughs> <laughs> she said all the digits. Right. <laughs> so um, I could a point or two off. Um, and so I didn't have to take my GMAT because um, the Kellogg Executive MBA program is um, one of the few MBA programs that doesn't require you to take the GMAT. They're more focused on your work experience. So if you have a minimum of eight years work experience, if you um, have a good recommendation and if you have you know, essays and they also look at your transcripts and then your story, like why you wanna be there um, and you know, your end result. And I think the key thing is um, when I had that breakthrough when I saw the breakthrough video initially talking about oh, the um, webinar? not to give it away. Yeah. 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 The initial webinar, just talking about like, what is your aspiration? Like, what can you contribute to the school to make, continue their name? And I had to really think about that. Um, so Kellogg looks at all of those items as well. 
Beautiful, beautiful. So yes, uh, Kutsai is referring to um, my presentation, Six Secrets to Multiple Ivy League Grad School Acceptances. If you haven't seen it yet, um, it's free. It's really helpful and inspiring and it's only 37 minutes long. So I highly <laughs> recommend it. And we'll, for those of you who are watching this video on YouTube, we'll make sure to put the link um, below the video so that you can um, register for the webinar and, and watch it. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I had a, a blast making that webinar. A lot of people found hope in that and in, in, in the message of the webinar, one of which is you don't have to be perfect. It's actually more about your future potential a lot of times than it is about, oh, I've been perfect my entire career thus far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, so talk to us about why you chose to work with the art of applying versus doing it on your own. I know you did touch on that a little bit already. Mm -hmm. um, so just knowing that this is something that I've never done before. Um, I didn't have any, you know, close family members who I can talk to. I had friends who applied, but you know, them being so busy. I mean, I reached out to them for conversations and you can ask people about the school and their experiences and, you know, maybe somebody will review your essay once or give you some feedback or, but they're not going to spend the, the time um, that, you know, is really needed. And so I just felt the art of applying would be really helpful. And I talked about, you know, my consultant, but it really is um, a group a, a real team effort who helps you in this process. So there was an admin who I would continue to reach out to who helped me. Um, there was in the final stages, you know, I uploaded my, you know, my resume and everything. And so multiple people saw and had input in my application and helping me. So um, I'm just really grateful to the whole experience because it, it truly changed me because I was really discouraged um, multiple times during this process. And there was even um, a counselor who, you know, you met with, I, I can't yeah, remember uh, how many times. Success coach. <laughs> just success coach. Yeah, yeah, I just. I couldn't remember. Uh, they're I not couldn't like, remember they're what not was. Like they're, they're, we call them mindset coaches. I, I even mm -hmm. I forgot what they're yes, called. So yeah, we have our on staff mindset. Yeah. I just always have to be real, like it is not yeah. therapy or counseling. But the mindset. No, it's not. Actually, tell everybody yeah, about it, your experience it, with, with the mindset. Yeah, coach. and the mindset coach was really good as well because it kind of leveled me and also leveled my expectations because when I joined, I was like, okay, I have three weeks to finish this essay, and it was like, okay, so what is your other? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't really have, have real expectations for this experience. So the mindset coach really helped level me and helped me kind of put together different programs and just talking through to her, talking about how sometimes, um, you know, getting started can be difficult for me and kind of talking me through on, you know, ways that I can get started, giving me ideas. Um, just different conversation points. So that was really helpful for me. So it really truly is a team effort. So you're not just working with one person. And Kanisha was really helpful. Like I called her and I texted her too. Probably shouldn't be saying that either. But I was just <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't say it. So Kutsai did that, but that is that is not the dumb thing. We do not call or text the CEO. Um, yeah, yeah, Kutsai was just having a, 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 what she felt was an emergency. Yes. yes. In, general, in general, thank you for sharing all that, Kutsai, because um, I think one of the things that makes the art of applying very different than other companies uh, is community mm -hmm. and in two different ways. One, the community that is there to support you. I think um, I'm not 100% sure because I've never been the client of another company, but my understanding is most other companies that help people apply to top graduate schools, it's a very siloed process. It's you're working with one person um, and you, that person is hopefully have enough time and attention to give you um, and you're just going off of the advice that they give you. At The Art of Applying, we have an entire village of support 
you know, we have in-house test prep, which you didn't end up needing because Kellogg didn't require a test, but we have mm -hmm. in-house te test prep, in-house mindset coaches, a team of consultants, a team of editors, a team of admins, um, and all, all of those different touch points for just your one applications. It's almost like oceans, oceans eight, you know, just for your application. So that's one side of the community aspect. But then another side of the community aspect is the community among our clients. As far as I know, no other company actually creates community among the applicants. Mm -hmm. um, and I always say, and I've said it in other videos, is my clients are not competing with each other. What, there's 80 of you a year? You know, if, even if the business explodes, let's say there's 500 of you a year, mm -hmm. And there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people applying to business school. If anything, it's like you all are like, like my Spartan 300 or whatever, who are competing with the, the 10,000 other people who maybe didn't invest in themselves or worked with a different company. <clears throat> um, so it's, there's really no competition among the clients. So I would love to hear about your experience with the community aspect on the, with the other clients. Um, I can't say that I really utilized all of the tools yeah. fully, um, okay. but they, there was a Facebook group that was created one when I was, um, joined and then when I became an alumni. And so I did see, you know, people, you know, asking questions and things like that. I didn't really take advantage of it as much as I should have, um, even the, um, calls um but i did find when i did participate in them there were some things that you know pertain to me i think i would have participated more if i was going into the full time or a more traditional mba program whereas this was like an executive mba program so some of the things that were being discussed didn't pertain to me but i do think that it's um very helpful just because sometimes people will ask questions that you didn't even think to ask. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I, I need to look into that. Or, oh, great, glad you had that experience. Maybe I can have that experience as well. And then also just hearing success stories. And it just keeps you motivated. Like, wow, that's great. Um, that person was able to do it. Or, you know, that person, you know, had some hurdles. Let me make sure that I can overcome those hurdles as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you for that. So, and I would say actually that's a good point is we have a lot of resources um, available to applicants and that you don't have to use, we would like for you to use as many of them as possible. For example, it sounds like you made better use of our mindset coaches on staff than a lot of people do. Um, mm -hmm. It sounds like you booked all your appointments and actually had them and benefited from them. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Whereas some people don't even book all the appointments that are included in, in the package. So um, fantastic. And, um, why did you choose to work with the art of applying versus another company that does a similar thing? So, um, there was another company, but it wasn't necessarily, um, it, oh, my light turned off. Let me turn it back on. Okay. I think it was motion sensitive. No way. Oh, there it goes. Okay. There it goes. I just needed to move. <laughs> so, um, there was another company and it just, it wasn't focused on what my goal was and my goal was getting into Kellogg. Now I will say my consultant and, um, and other people encouraged me to look it into other programs. And because I was, you know, paying, I was like, I need to, to, you know, at least listen to my consultant. And so I did do that. I did look at other schools. I did do research. I did visit other schools. And I'm glad that I had that experience because sometimes you may say, this is what I want. And then you visit something else and you're like, oh, this is what I really want. So after visiting and going, doing my, you know, complete due diligence, mm -hmm. I realized that this really is the school that I wanted. And I'm glad I was able to go through that process. Um, but I think the art of applying really takes the time to try to understand what is your goal and try to help you get to that goal um, versus this is the cookie cutter thing. Um, everybody needs to do this. And I think that other program that I was looking at had so many additional expenses 
not necessarily um, just, you know, um, the, the, their fee, but it was like mandatory, you have to visit here, mandatory, you have to do this, mandatory here. And so the costs were just adding up and it wasn't necessarily all the things that were getting me to my goal. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I would love to just uh, hear about your story. Who, who are you? I, sh I should move that question earlier yeah. <laughs> in the script, but um, yeah, tell us a little bit about just you as a person. Mm -hmm. So um, I was born in Zimbabwe. I came to the United States when I was um, about three and a half, four years old. Um, and I, you know, grew up in Evanston. Um, so hence my love for Northwestern. Grew up actually just blocks away from Northwestern. Um, my aunt went to um, Northwestern, part of the Garrett Program Seminary School. And so all throughout school, I was was, you know, studying at the library at Northwestern. And um, even though I ended up going to DePaul, I knew that for some kind of graduate program, I would end up going to, to Kellogg. Um, so when I graduated um, from high school, um, I was always entrepreneurial. I was one of those kids who was, you know, selling candy and braiding hair. And so I was like, oh, the career path for me is probably something in business. So I did that. Um, and I also found out that I had a talent for art. And so I started taking art classes as well and um, took a couple different art classes at DePaul. And so when I graduated from DePaul, um, my first job out of college was an assistant brand manager. Um, and so I did that for um, two years. And at the time I thought I didn't love brand um, because I didn't necessarily love the products that I was working on. Um, and so for two years, I was a full-time artist. So I was selling at different galleries and painting. And in that two years, I found myself like, oh, wow, I'm an artist, but I don't necessarily paint every day. I'm writing business plans. I'm working on websites. I was like, I do love art. I just need to go back and find the career path that I love as well. So um, um, I was able to get back into marketing um, with some consulting roles, doing some working at some beauty companies and fell in love with beauty. And so that's my passion now. I'm um, a beauty brand manager. Um, I've worked in different um, cosmetic companies, different hair care companies, and I'm still an artist. So I still paint and teach classes and volunteer. So that's also my passion as well. So um, just in my career, I've just noticed that even though I started off really um, at a, I feel an accelerated pace, um, graduating and being an assistant brand manager. Um, and then I think my career is kind of settled. And so I need, I wanted something to, um, something to continue to continue because I felt like I was kind of stagnant. And then also just, um, just wanting to make sure that I was a well-rounded leader, making sure that um, I had all the tools to be an effective leader and lead my cross-functional team members in finance operations and things like that. So that's one of the key reasons why I decided to go back and to get my MBA so that I can, you know, be an effective leader and, you know, be able to um, understand all of the different verticals of, of business. Oh, beautifully said. Thank you for sharing all of that. I, I didn't realize you were a full-time artist for two years. I know you've shown me some of your art, which is lovely. And, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't know that's so cool. Yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Wow. Um, what were your biggest fears during the application process before you were working with us? And then even after you were working with us? Mm -hmm. um, biggest fear was um not being accepted biggest fear was um you know doing this whole process and then not meeting my goal um i talked about earlier the frustration that i was feeling about my career kind of feeling like it was stagnant um feeling like um, i wasn't progressing and then just 
just doing, trying different things and not succeeding. Like previously, there's so many things that I've done, you know, different classes, different, you know, interviews or different projects or whatever, and it just not panning out. And so I was just in the mindset that this could be the same thing. And um, I'm, I'm a person of faith um, and it literally took every ounce of faith for me to finish this application process. And I have to be, I was in that mindset, well, you know, I had so many negative things happen and I could go into this you know, submit my application with thinking this is going to be the same thing. But I had to think, I was just like, if I'm not going to believe that this is going to work, then don't even submit the application. Don't even, you know, continue this. You have to believe that it's going to, you know, happen. And I think, um, you know, my consultant and all of the different steps prepared me because when I went into my interview, I had already, I was confident. I was like, oh, I, I had a practice interview already. I kind of know what kind of questions they're going to ask. Of course, they didn't ask the exact same questions like my uh, practice interview, but I felt confident versus me like, okay, what are they going to ask? Is this like a job interview? And it's definitely not exactly like a job interview. Interview. Um, it's, it's different. Um, they did ask me some some uh, tough questions. I was like, oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> but I was prepared. Um, and so I feel like this prepared me for each step versus me walking through the process blind, not knowing what to expect at all. And sometimes we do that um, in different scenarios and in different life stacks. And I think I've done that, you know, um, sometimes when I, you know, interviewed for different things or applied for different things, I didn't necessarily have the success because I did it on my own. And um, I reached out to people, of course, you always do that due diligence and, you know, reach out to people who've done it, people who work there or whatever. But again, people are only going to give you so much of their time and so much of their resources. And this allowed for me to have, you know, that full access, like the first couple, you know, weeks, I was able to ask my consultant as many questions as I needed. Um, and that was really helpful um, because I really truly did not know what to expect. Beautiful. And what did you like best about working with the Art of Applying? Um, just having somebody to ask questions, um, having um, somebody to kind of bounce ideas off of, um, and just having that additional source of, you know, encouragement, um, and, and having that support, you know, that I think is really needed in this process because for me, I'm not, I, I don't know if that's what everybody goes through these different roller coasters of like, Oh, I'm applying. Oh, I'm applying. Oh, I'm applying. You know, <laughs> it, it was just a, it was a lot for me. And then just having my own, like, Oh my gosh, I'm about to turn 35. Have I, you know, accomplished everything that I wanted to accomplish? And is this the right time? Is this, you know, just all of those things. Um, it just made me like, okay. Um, and then also just financially, even though this was an investment that I was making, my goal was to get um, scholarships and stuff like that. So my program with the Art of Applying, um, I think ends in like July or something like that. So I'm still going to take advantage of the words that I have so that I can continue to apply for some different um, scholarships and grants and things like that. So i um, still going to take full advantage of the program. That's exactly um, so, right. And please do that. Yeah, <laughs> more success stories to come. <laughs> Good. Sequel. No, surely. So uh, what Kutsai will be working on with the art of applying between now and um, the end of her engagement, which is probably May 1st. That's usually like people when we graduate yeah. people. Um, mm -hmm. So between now, which is we're in December 2018 and, and May 1st, 2019 will be on um, uh, scholarship applications. It will be writing to Northwestern, seeing if there are any funds, um, just whatever we can do and, and walk with you through that. I also wanted to say is 
uh, you had mentioned, oh, I, I didn't use the community aspects uh, very much of the program, but that's not over yet. The Facebook group mm -hmm. is still there. Like post your, post your great news, let us celebrate you. And then also see who's in the Chicagoland area, the Evanston area, mm -hmm. um, who may want to get together or whatever, trade good stories about best, I mean, you already know because you grew up there, but you know, best places yeah. to live. Yeah. Or, you know, um, and it might be really nice to connect with the other um, experienced people who are going to different executive programs besides yours. You know, we have somebody in the program who's working with us to get off of the, uh, we, he worked with us and now he's on the waiting list at MIT Sloan Fellows. Oh, great. Yeah, so it'd be great to, to connect with him because he's going to work with us through the rest of his engagement and our focus mm -hmm. will be on fighting, getting, you know, fighting his way off the waiting list. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful. And my last question is just, what would you like to say to that person watching this video who's like, wow, that story sounds wonderful. She seems really cool. She seems similar to me or similar to someone I would know or someone I would want to be in school with. It worked for her. Can it work for me? I don't know. I don't know mm -hmm. if I want to book a breakthrough call. I'm scared. Um, maybe I can just do it on my own or like ask a bunch of friends or Google a bunch of stuff and read a bunch of books. And it, 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 that does work for some people, but mm -hmm. just talk to us about, talk to that person. What do you want mm -hmm. to say to that person? I think at the um, beginning, you need to kind of assess the type of person you are and the type of learner you are. And I think the way that you do that is like, what was your college experience and how did you learn? And for me, I was always that student who needed the smaller classroom environments, no more than 50 to 60 students in the classroom. And I was one of those people who needed to talk to the teacher and the professor, needed to have the small groups, needed to go in for the tutor. I always have had to, you know, work a little bit harder than the next person. And you may be that person who you can be in a, a classroom full of a thousand people and you can, you know, do everything on your own because you're super smart. Um, but for me, I knew that I needed some additional help. And I needed um, somebody who I can ask questions to. And I didn't have the time or the luxury to be Googling and hoping that what I Googled was correct or um, writing essays and hoping that what I did was right. And there are tons of resources. Don't get me wrong. I Googled. I, I did my own research, which you should. And um, I looked at example essays, which you should, but create the essays are so specific to you that you reading somebody else's essay doesn't mean that it's going to help you create your own. So you have to, you know, draw and pull through your great um, experiences and what you want to get out of it. And I think the art of applying really allows for you to kind of narrow in and focus, like, what do you want? And I think that's one of the reasons why I paused for a little bit on my application process, because I had to really, like, what do I want? The question, even though they're very broad, and it, it seems like you have all the time in the world to answer it, but they're very specific. You only have 450 words, so you have to get to the point. And I think because of that, you really have to know what you want. And they just kind of help you talk through what you want. They're not going to write the essay for you. They're not going to do any of that, but they can help you kind of um, get through, you know, a lot of the hurdles and a lot of the barriers that you have and really truly have your breakthrough so that you do have a strong essay. Um, and I feel like if I wouldn't, I know without a shadow of a doubt that if I would not have done the art of applying that I wouldn't even be having this conversation about Kellogg um, because it's just so many different things that um, I was able to get assistance on. So I know myself. So you have to look and see, do you, what type of person are you? What type of learner are you? What type of assistance you have? Like, what kind of support do you have? Do you have a friend who is a great writer and is going to sit and critique your stuff? Um, and most people, maybe once or twice, they're going to do that with you, but they're not going to do 20,000 words <laughs> with you um, <laughs> in editing. So um, I definitely think it's an investment that um, you should, 
you know, look into. Um, and I, I don't regret not one moment of this process because I think it really did make me an overall better person. Well, you said that beautifully. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank Kisa. you. That, thank you. That was so wonderful. So thank you for your time, for sharing your story, for your words. And um, I'm just so grateful to be able to work with amazing people such as yourself. So um, I know that you share, taking the time to share your story today will inspire and encourage a lot of people. Yeah, and also um, the whole community aspect, like um, when I was having my mindset and my conversations with Kinesia, I mean, they saw that I was down and they didn't have to do this. Like they sent me a little care package and Kinesia sent me her book and I just felt like that was going above and beyond um, what their you know, what I had paid for. And I'm really grateful to that. So there really truly is a sense of community and a, a sense of wanting to see you win. It's not just about, oh, join the program. You know, we just want to, you know, it's really trying to get the whole person um, whole and complete. So I'm grateful. Oh, beautiful. Thank you, Kutai. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching our video. For more videos just like this, make sure you click subscribe. And if you want to work with us on your graduate school applications, visit us at theartofapplying.com or click on the link below in the description.